$10 donation from Andre who said, Hey, Albino, it's me, Retro Gamer ZX0. Remember me? Nice run and keep up the good work. My first GDQ, my first donation, and my first time seeing Titanfall 2 on the big screen. Summer Games Done Quick will continue in a moment after these messages. Summer Games Done Quick 2017 is brought to you in part by Humble Bundle. You know, whether you subscribe to their Humble Monthly, buy from the Humble Store, or get one of their signature Humble Bundles, a proceed of every purchase goes to charity. And did you know when you subscribe to Humble Monthly, the games are all yours to keep? That's correct. They, they don't go away, even if you cancel that subscription. Yeah, something I didn't know before this event began was that Humble Monthly subscriptions and regular Humble Bundles can be gifted, so that's just great. Feel free to get over to Humble Bundle and check out some games. Up next will be Diablo 2 Lord of Destruction, an any percent normal assassin run by Mr. Llama. Uh, it's going to be quite, quite a good time. If you could see what's happening on stage already during setup, but trust me, it's, it's going to be excellent. All right, well, that's uh, about the end of my time reading donations for you all here. Thanks so much. I've been prolix. I'll be handing you over to the wonderful musical Daredevil because the show must go on. So as we set up, uh, he'll read more donations for you. And thanks so much. Hope you all have a wonderful remainder of your marathon. Be excellent to each other. Uh, keep on memeing it up, whatever it is you might be doing. Enjoy yourselves. Have a great time as we celebrate speedrunning and gaming and do it all for such a great cause. All right, thanks Prolix for the wonderful hosting job. I'm Musical Daredevil, and I will be announcing donations for Diablo II Lord Destruction by Mr. Lama SC on our whirlwind tour of Tristram and all of the wonderful things that are quite around it. We have $50 from Orin Crest. Nothing to say other than thank you for giving us the wonderful opportunity to donate to a worthy cause watching really short versions of our favorite games. We have $40 from Two Grey Wolves. Thanks for the great content and entertaining runs year after year. We have $30 from Gazo Snake 211 Thanks for this awesome marathon. We have $10 from Stash. Love GDQ every year. Keep up the great work, gang. We have $50 from Seamus Y. I love GDQ. This show gets better every year. Thanks so much to everyone who works so hard to make this happen.
and we are ready to go in our Diablo 2 Lord of Destruction run by Mr. Lama SC. Take it away. Can I get the name incentive? Yes, the winner of our player name was Chris Wilson. All one word. Sorry, Ryu, looks like you're only in second. <laughs> per usual. Okay, we'll go on three. One, two, three. Greetings, my name is Mr. Lama C, and today I will be speedrunning Diablo 2, Lord of Destruction. Diablo 2 is an action role-playing game where the player must complete quests, defeat minions, and ultimately slay Diablo and bring justice to the crap I lost. I had it going there for a bit, oh well. Anyways, welcome everybody. My name is Mr. Lama C. Um, this is a D2 speedrun. I'm going to be speedrunning the assassin. That's a tough voice to keep there. Uh, so, this is just kind of a, uh, a slightly different run from before. Um, so, prior I ran the Sorceress and Druid, um, and they each kind of have their own ways that they get through the game. The Assassin herself uh, is just going to be known for having um, trap skills. I'll kind of try and introduce uh, the character itself. Um, traps, so these are just kind of projectiles that I'll lay down on the ground and they will deal some elemental damage. Uh, shadow disciplines are kind of some passive tree there. And then martial arts, which is uh, as it seems, but melee characters in this game aren't very good. Um, so we will just be going with the traps. Uh, and that is just going to be how it kind of start out. So finding a dagger right there is actually really useful. Um, the dagger is going to increase my attack speed, which later on when I start throwing traps, which are, which is right now, um, this is actually going to speed up my ability to throw these right here uh, by having this dagger. Not even close. Um, and by the way, Chris Wilson, the name for those who are curious why that name was chosen, he is a uh, Path of Exile developer and producer. So shout out to that community for once again um, getting the name incentive there met, or I suppose uh, being first in that. And then Raya Ketsukadal is another Diablo 2 speedrunner, um, second per usual, as we saw right there. Shout outs to Ryu. So anyways, um, so right now I'm going to be just be kind of running through the areas, trying to get some levels. Uh, and this is kind of a specific thing to Diablo 2. Um, speedering itself that I think is really interesting uh, and really adds a lot of variety or, or addition to the game, a lot of extra strategy. You're not just trying to run through the game as fast as possible, um, but instead you're trying to run through the game as fast as possible while also stopping to gain experience and levels along the way. And that's kind of a really important key piece of Diablo 2 um, that I think should be noted and thought about. Because a lot of people could say, run to Indariel and possibly kill her um, a little bit faster than I would be doing right, right now during this run, but they would be severely underleveled and then later on in the game, that's gonna be an issue for them. Um, and the bigger reason that it'll be an issue is actually later on in the game, oh, there's extreme Chinese. Uh, so this boosts my experience by 50%. So I wish I had that for that last kill because that would've been really nice, but oh well. Um, but, but the, th the reason that that's such a, a like big important piece is because to beat this game on normal, you have to actually be level 20, and then on Nightmare level 40, and on Hell level 60, um, which are the different levels of difficulty that you'll run through. So the way the game works is you go through all five acts, complete all the quests, um, and you'll get to the end, and you will be able to uh, then rinse and repeat, essentially. But of course, everything gets more difficult as the game ramps up. Um, and so difficulty increases, a lot of monsters gain immunities and extra abilities, uh, and so it kind of, or enchants, whatever. And uh, so it kind of really kind of makes the game more difficult as it goes on. But yeah, so you have to get those levels, and there's very kind of specific spots that you want to get those in this run, um, which a lot of people, uh, it, it's something that you'll learn over time, right? So a lot of people do online play, they'll just kind of do the standard um, Tau Rash's tomb runs uh, or Tristram runs or whatever, but when you're in single player, it's going to be a little bit different uh, because you don't really have the party to help you out and get there. So now I'm going to start working towards a skill that's called Burst of Speed, and I actually want to talk a little bit about 
um, Diablo 2 in a, in a frame sense. We're all about the frames here anyways. So Diablo 2 runs at 25 FPS. If I type slash FPS, you'll see up in the top left corner, 25 FPS, that's what we're getting right now. And it sometimes will jump up 40, 50, that's, that's a lie. The game itself is locked in at 25 FPS. Um, so things like the speed of my casting, the speed of my attacking, um, all of this stuff, frame rate hits, blocking, whatever it is, um, all of this stuff is based off of those numbers right there. And so there's a lot of important uh, or specific numbers that you kind of want to find along the way um, to, or to meet per character so you can increase your frame per attack or your frame per um, whatever it is, right? Frame per cast, anything of that nature. So uh, for the assassin, uh, what I'm going to be trying to increase is my attack speed because I'm laying down these traps. And I've talked about this a little bit before um, in, in that the trap laying speed, right? By getting this dagger, I get kind of a, the dagger class has a 20 IAS um, kind of boost to it, you could say. So whenever I, use, I do some calculations on it, I'm going to pretend like I have 20 IAS more, which is increased attack speed. Um, and then I can add that together with other gear, with other um, skills, and that level six skill that I'm working towards called burst of speed right here will increase that. So as I'm using that, not only will my speed of running increase, but my attack speed will increase as well. So right now I'm looking for the tower, and this is going to be a place where we'll probably get a few donations um, read. Uh, so I found the tower, and now I'm just going to go find this waypoint. And hopefully it's close by. We got two shrines, which is really nice. Um, you saw I had that earlier experience shrine, and I was really happy about it. Uh, those are very crucial in world record runs, such as this right here. So if you want to run for a record right there, if, if, it's pretty much impossible, I would say, if you don't have experience shrines. Um, you're just not going to get it whatsoever. So the Black Marsh is a really important map because you need to make sure that you're finding um, the waypoint and the tower in a close enough proximity, and it looks like we might be a little bit, uh, have a little bit of distance between them right now, and hopefully I can find it still. There it is. Okay, not too bad, and we got three shrines on the way. I'm pretty happy with that. So, uh, but sometimes you'll get a map where it's just like there's a river in the way, and it's all the way across, and it's just the worst thing ever, and you're just like, okay, I'm just not going to deal with this. Um, I'm also really happy right there that I got those potions. So the strangling gas potions are going to be useful later on uh, to deal with the um, fire enchant. So monsters can be fire enchanted. The countess herself will be fire enchanted, um, which means that she has a very high resistance to fire. And of course, these um, fire trap balls that I'm throwing at her uh, will be uh, not doing a lot of damage. So what I do instead is I get that. I need to be careful of this guy because he's cold enchanted, so that would slow me down. I want to make sure I avoid that. So uh, what, what it's going to do in, instead is I'm going to be throwing poison at her um, to kind of damage her that way. So once I get level 6, things will kind of speed up a little bit. Um, and then I'll just be down here running for, running for a few minutes. Uh, and by a few minutes, I mean probably like 10 plus. It's kind of the annoying, grindy part of the run. After this, you really don't have much of it at all. But unfortunately, this is the one spot that we do. So if you want to go ahead and read a few donations now, and then when we get down to the uh, Countess, I can kind of explain a little bit more. All right, I have a massive pile of donations here. We have $5 from Iggy Zig. Hey, Llama, can we get a quick roll call from the couch? Uh, yeah, we got uh, Ryu Ketsukadal sitting on the couch there. Thanks. Roll call. We have $80 from Daniel San. Stay a while and listen. If you're looking for Diablo, you've just missed him. I am so happy to see my all time favorite game on GDQ. Good luck on the run. Please save Kane, by the way. I think we do have a lot going towards save Kane right now, which is good. We have a lot going towards save Kane. Let me actually just check that really quickly. Oh, yeah, save him is quite in the lead with $5,455, and leave him is just $1,600. There you go. A lot of people love Kane. He left a good impression with all of his uh, speeches, I guess. So now I'm, now I'm going to be down here uh, facing off with the Countess. 
And so dealing with her minions isn't a big problem, but dealing with her, like I said, I'm going to be throwing poison potions. And so I'll be weapon swapping between those so I can throw daggers when I'm throwing my fire bolt or fire blast. Um, and then I can uh, drop my poison potions on the offhand. All right, so we got one of the four runes that we need. So that's okay. We're going to be doing this a few times, like I said. Um, this is definitely going to be a very tense, tight part of the run. Not tense, uh, a very make or break ish kind of piece in terms of what our speed is going to look like later on. So the things that I'm looking for as the run progresses, I need to have um, what's called uh, stealth and a leaf. Okay, so these are two rune words. So that, those runes that I got, such as that Tau rune, will give me plus to poison resistance, which in itself is worthless. Um, and then an Eth rune will give me, I was an Eth given armor. Uh, something else that's worthless, something I really don't care about at all. Um, but when you put those together in an armor, they will actually form a super armor called stealth, which will give me faster run walk, faster hit recovery, um, and also give me faster cast rate, which I won't need on this character. But it essentially just beefs everything up, makes it really, really good. Um, and that's true as well with what's called a leaf staff. So I'm going to get a two open socket staff, and I'm going to be um, socketing that with a tier rune and a row rune. And then when you combine those together, it gives plus three to fire skills, which is a really big time save. And a lot of people think it's just for a sorceress because it's in, in a staff, but that's not true at all. It's any character that has... Um, fire skills will get the benefit there. So since I'll be using fire traps uh, throughout this run, that's going to be just a really big benefit. So the reason that I also really like to run down here, and let's say even if I got all of the runes on this run right here, all four of the runes that I need, um, I would still come down here and do more of these runs. And the reason is because I'm running for this experience that I'm getting. So these groups right here, anybody that has to like see the Dark Breath Shade, whatever his name was, or Puke Lust, or whatever it is, any of those guys um, are going to give 500% experience, them and all of their minions. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm looking for all, just all, as many of those groups as I can. And that's not just going to be at the start of the game, that's going to be throughout the game um, as it progresses. So this right here is another boss group, so everybody here gives 500% experience. And if you watch my experience bar down in the bottom, right above my stamina bar, I don't know if you can see it. Um, this thing right here. If you watch that, you'll see it visibly jump whenever I kill monsters in these groups. So it's worth, it's worth just a lot more experience to go after that. And we gotta make sure that we keep our burst of speed on. So once again, I'll just be kind of farming this Countess a little bit. Uh, looking for a tier rune, a row rune, and an eth rune. And then bonus runes would be two more row runes for some extra fire resistance later on in the run, which can just be helpful. So we have our stealth at least, which is really nice. That's our first piece. So if you want to read some more donations, go ahead. All right. We have a $150 donation from Ryu Quetzalcoatl. <laughs> hey, Llama. This is your helmet on the couch speaking. Good luck. Go fast. Don't rip. Oh, wait. It's softcore. Love you. <laughs> so Ryu is a uh, hardcore runner, and uh, so sometimes he'll, which is, you know, why he's on the couch in a helmet. Uh, um, so sometimes he'll make fun of me a little bit for, for playing softcore. But there you go. A little shout out, a little shout out in the back for him. Um, he is a great guy, though. So we'll just continue on down this tower. Like I said, if you want to read maybe like one, two more donations, because I'm just going to be killing some bosses. Um, and then I can talk a little bit more about some stuff. I have an anonymous $200 donation. Deckard Kane has a message for Twitch stat. Twitch chat. Stay a while and donate. <laughs> I have an anonymous $150 donation. You know why I donated this much. <laughs> 100 and what was it? 150. Hold well, on, let me adjust my mic here. That's better. <laughs> okay. I have $100 from Bayonetta. So totally looking forward to the Diablo 2 run. Good luck, Llama. Thank you so much. So um, a couple things I do want to talk about with this run. So one thing is this run does not have glitches. 
or uh, or any extent that it actually matters, right? There's like tiny little things, but nothing that's nothing that really benefits the game. So there's no like um, you know wall skipping or clipping or anything of that nature. Um, no buffer overflow, no out of bounds. Uh, there's like tiny little out of bounds things, but nothing that's useful in speedrunning. Um, so it's it's a pretty sound game, pretty well made in that in that case, and so. It's more just kind of a showcase of somebody who has just sat there and, uh, as my ex might say, has no life, you know, whatever that means. She always spoke in riddles. Uh, and uh, plays games, you know, plays the same game over and over for a couple of years. So that's kind of the um, extent of it. And, and it's very, uh, I want to try and showcase, I suppose, um, what to kind of look for in it that showcases the, all right, one more rune, and we are good on that. That's good. Um, what kind of makes the game really interesting for speedrunning? Um, so the stuff that's really cool about it is it has a lot of RNG and just decision making, right? Immediate, you're just sitting there, and then all of a sudden you have to decide, uh, am I killing this boss group, am I not? Because um, everything, every single time, is going to spawn differently. Maps are procedurally generated, um, so you don't know exact paths on maps, you just kind of have a rough idea based on certain patterns that it should run and stuff. Item drops are random, these rune drops are random. Um, what's in the stores and what you can buy, what you can, I mean, everything and anything that you can think of pretty much in this game um, has a lot of random factors to it. So you just have to kind of sit there and be running along and then make, just make that split second decision of what do I do? Um, and that's something that has been built up over time with a lot of playing. Uh, and I know when I initially watched the game, it didn't look nearly as difficult as when I started um, trying to speedrun it. I was like, oh, this isn't too bad. I used to play Diablo 2. Like, not bad at all. Um, but when you start playing these low-level characters and they're just glass cannons that can just be uh, abused super easily and, uh, and have a lot of difficulties with, like, faster hit recovery and all of a sudden, you know, every, every time something hits you, it stuns you and, um, you know, you don't just have all the perfect gear and stuff. It really changes the dynamic of the game and it's, it's kind of interesting. And so I think that's one of the things that if you're watching and you're wondering, hey, why should I kind of appreciate this run? You know, there's it's just a dude playing a game casually. Um, in a sense, yes. But, uh, but the pieces that really come from it are, are I would say, the, the split-second decisions um, and then having to just build into your uh, arsenal, your whatever you want to call it, um, your skill set of knowing exactly when and where you can run, where you can be. Um, and there's a lot of stuff that doesn't really get to be seen um, throughout, throughout the run or, or is, is difficult to see because it's not stuff that you look for when you're watching it, um, just kind of more casually. So a lot of the stuff is going to be around avoid, like exact placements of where I'm placing my assassin to be close enough for dropping hits, for grouping up monsters, creating holes that I can kind of run through. Um, there's a lot of pathing that you kind of want to be aware of as the run's going on. And so you want to make sure that you're always in the right spot. And perfect. All right, we actually found all four of our runes, which makes me a very happy camper there. Um, that is, yeah, that's something I'm super happy about. Because each one of those rune words, the stealth rune word is probably 10 to 13 minutes of time. Um, that could be lost if I didn't have that. And then the uh, leaf rune word is probably about five to seven minutes of time that would be lost. So each of those right there, obviously you can tell like if you're in a world record run um, or trying to get a world record run and you don't get those runes in the time that you need to get those runes, uh, well then you just quit. Like that's, you just start over. So there's a lot of resets like that. Um, and that's one of the other difficulties with Diablo 2 um, and when you're trying to run it kind of competitively is not every run can be a world record run. Um, and not every day you're going to be on point. So you have to find the day where you're running really, really well and all of the maps and RNG and everything is working in your favor. Because you could be running perfect, but if you get terrible maps, don't get the runes you need. Um, I've had days where I've gone 10 hours without getting out of the Black Marsh. Because every time I got to the Black Marsh, I got a terrible waypoint, no shrines. Uh, and the tower was really far away. And it was like, 
All right, reset, and you just keep doing it over and over. Finally, you get in there, and you have a good good map and everything, and then your tower has really bad bosses, so you get no experience. And then you get down the next one, and you start, and your tower is great, and then you don't find any of the runes you need. Um, and this kind of just builds as the run goes on. So it's it's really interesting uh, to see and and to kind of note that and see just. There, it's it's difficult to to say exactly how fast a run can be, um, because each one kind of has a set time um, that it could be, or a potential time, assuming you played perfectly. But you can never really know until after the run's over. So when you're when you're going through there, sometimes the uh, the times are tough. So as a as famous poet and. Uh, Philosopher Tupac once said, "Even though you're fed up, you got to keep your head up." So that's kind of the uh, the motto that I like to keep when I'm running Diablo 2. If you want to go with some more donations, go ahead. All right, I have an anonymous $200 donation, an anonymous $256 donation, and an anonymous $500 donation. Wow. I also have a $5,177.34 donation. The donator was Fish Fox, and they simply say, comments are difficult. <laughs> it can be. It's very true. Yes. Wow. That is, uh, that's, that's awesome right there. That is awesome. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and move on at this point. And I'll just drink a little bit of stamina. Um, stamina potions do stack. It's always one of the like mind-blowing yeah, things that an SGDQ or AGDQ run provides to a lot of people. They do stack. Each stamina potion that I drink gives me 30 seconds of uh, additional stamina. So now I have two minutes, because I drank four, where my stamina bar will not decrease at all. And I'm going to go ahead and buff my strength. And I can go ahead and talk about stats a little bit as well. Um, so you have four stats in this game. Strength, which gives a little bit of like physical damage, but it's mainly used for gear. Dexterity, also used for gear somewhat, but this will also boost your attack rating and then your chance to block, um, which I'm not really going to care about either of those because, once again, this is a glass cannon build for the most part, and I'm not going to really be using gear um, or hopefully getting hit too often where I need to block. Uh, and blocking also takes frames, so we try to just avoid that. Um, vitality will give me life, so I'm just going to pump that to try and stay alive as much as possible with whatever life I can. And energy will give mana. Sometimes I decide to dedicate five mana or five points to that for a little bit of extra mana, but generally not. Um, generally on the assassin, you're really focusing on that vitality because she has a pretty good stat gain on it. So for every point, um, she gets, I think, three points of life, where, whereas some of them get two. Uh, and Barbarian gets the most, but he's terrible in other ways. Um, additionally, uh, things that you really want to kind of watch for when you're running around um, is you want to be looking for, like I said, those boss groups, but you want to be focusing on what exactly those boss groups have um, for their skills. Uh, so each boss group in normal is going to have one uh, one like stat, so it could be like they're cold enchanted, so all of the monsters are going to be cold enchanted. And we'll see. So like I'll check here. So he's multi-shot, right? So he's just going to shoot additional arrows, can do a little bit more damage, not too bad. Um, but there's definitely some ones that get really, really bad, uh, especially as you get towards Nightmare where they'll get additional and then Hell where they'll have even a third stat. Um, it can just be really painful if you get certain things stacked on top of each other. You get something like extra strong, lightning enchant, cold enchant, um, and they'll just do a ton of damage, slow you, and it makes it really difficult. So you always kind of want to be on the lookout for those boss groups for that experience, but then additionally just watching um, and seeing, okay, is this going to be, uh, you know, is this a boss group I'd want to stop and fight, or is this one that I say, nah, we should just, we should just let go and just move on. And that's another one of those just kind of split time decisions that you have to make. So to the left there, there's going to be a boss group um, of cold enchanted tainteds. I don't really care to fight those. So those are one, that's one of the groups that I'll probably just run past. If I was level 12 right now, I might, because it would give me um, a, a, the skill that I'm going to use at level 12, which I'll show you guys soon. Um, it's a really good skill. It's going, to, it's going to allow me to kind of start dropping traps and running forward. So this is where a lot of the assassin gets a lot of her speed from, actually. Um, it's Wake of Fire. So I just set down a trap on the ground, 
uh, and then I'm able to continue pushing forward in the game, and that has no effect whatsoever. And ooh, it looks like we found a secret room. So there's nothing, there's nothing important about this room. Uh, it has some chests and stuff like that, but you can see on the map there, it's got that little square, um, and it has that secret door on the side there. So one of the like fun little secrets of the game. Um, once again, there's no, not really a lot of cool secrets. Um, there's a couple, but uh, nothing that's really going to be beneficial in speedrunning. So now I'm running around trying to find the exit. Oh, this is level three. I thought we were in level two. OK, so I want to go up actually over here uh, for this one. I thought I was, I guess I bl blitzed through level two and three. Um, so I need to run. I'll try and teach you guys maps, I suppose. We'll see how it goes. Um, the way that maps work in this game is there's, there's a set kind of starting block and then where you want to run from that. And uh, so if, if a block is running, man, we don't have a good map coming up for it. Maybe I'll save that for a little bit later. I could have done it in the jails. But um, essentially, I knew I needed to, r to run to the top right there because my entrance was facing towards the bottom right. Um, and each, each map, or not each map, but some maps um, have set kind of s stuff like that. Other maps don't. For instance, right now we're in the catacombs. There's nothing useful down here for telling me where I need to go. There's some basic patterns that I can pick up on as I'm kind of running around. Uh, but pretty much I'm just running blind until I run into something that I recognize. And then at that point, it's either continue down this path or, uh, or turn back. So a little bit of an, an annoyance. And once again, just more places for RNG to really affect the game. Um, you can have an amazing tower and get out with all of this experience and all of your runes and just be feeling great. And then get down here, and every single level, it takes the entire level before you're able to find the exit. And you're like, well, we just spent all that time down there. So if you want to read some more donations, you can go ahead. I have an anonymous $200 donation. I also have a $200 donation from a new Yamus. I will make another donation if the announcer mispronounces my name. How'd you do? Did you, did, did you get it mispronounced? Uh, I think so. We shall see. <laughs> it sounded pretty bad to me, so good job. We have $25. Hey, Funkmaster MP here. Really happy to see Mr. Llama SC running Diablo 2 with another GDQ. You guys are amazing. Blow those records away for a great cause. MSF and this great community makes dedicating my week watching totally worth it. P.S. Mr. Lama SC, will we be seeing any new tech that will make Diablo 2 running faster than Diablo 1 with its casual walking yet? Um, so, not, not really, maybe kind of. There's something that we've recently kind of played around with, discovered, uh, that can bring a little bit of speed to the Paladin, maybe the Amazon. Um, it's something called swap casting, and when I get to level 12 here, which should be any second now, I'll actually see if I can um, showcase it a little bit. Uh, and it's not great to, to show on the assassin so much, because uh, she doesn't really have good skills for it. But, and there's level three, perfect, one more level. Um, but it's, it's something where you can actually kind of trick the game into thinking that it's using a different animation. So let me just get level 12, and then I can... It's a lot easier to show than to explain. And even explaining it's not great. Or even showing it can be difficult. Um, okay, so we got level 12. So now I have what's called Wake of Fire, which is a wonderful skill. Um, and I'll go ahead and set... Oh, perfect, Endariel. So I'll do that setup right after Endariel. So this is the final boss of Act 1. Um, she's going to be really easy for the assassin. And the reason for that is because the assassin uh, does fire damage, and Endariel has minus 50 fire resist. So it's one of those things that's super helpful and works in our favor here. And we'll just drink a couple of these to really benefit it. Hopefully it'll be enough damage. We're going to be just short. If I have any more. Oh my gosh. That's annoying. One potion short. One potion short. So let's go touch up our mana really quick, and that should be good. I guess I could have put points into energy and done that or something. OK, so that's going to be level one, or act one completed. And then we'll just head over to War of, continue to act two. 
So now I'll go ahead and start setting up uh, the animation swap that I want here. So let's set that there. Okay. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a weapon swapping style here. Get some white boots done. Um, I'm going to be doing some weapon swapping while I'm also simultaneously casting um, some various spells. And uh, if, I, if I do it exactly right, it's pretty, pretty darn, has to be near perfect. You can actually kind of make the game think that you are... Um, no, not there. X. Oh, crap. Potions make it bad. Let me just lay down a couple of these. And then I'll go ahead and get this set up again. Okay. So we'll do... I need mana. Sorry, this is... I gotta concentrate a little bit. Uh, didn't get the swap. There we go. So now you can see that I have my attack on, and I'm actually sitting there just attacking. There you can see I have the, the normal attack, but it's actually laying down traps instead. Um, and so this is kind of a very, very interesting mechanic uh, that, like I said, we just kind of recently figured out and are trying to think about how it works in speedrunning. It works really cool with some characters, um, such as the Barbarian or the... Uh, the paladin, um, because you can you can have a really like you can totally screw with the animations. Uh, so the character might normally be, um, you know, like trying to leap, but instead you're making it whirlwind, and so he'll like whirlwind ac across gaps that just exist. Um, and on the back end, nothing is really changing, uh, but the animation does change, and it actually utilizes. Oh, I need to go up there, oops. Um, it actually utilizes whatever the al alternate skills cast rate or attack speed is. I know this is just getting like stupid confusing at this point. So, um, but essentially, let's say that I like right now. This is based on my attack speed. If I were to an to do a animation swap or, or some swap cast with a uh, skill that was based on my cast rate it would then make this skill now based on my cast rate instead. So it's really interesting um, how you can do some of that. And then there's also things like certain skills, um, like charge for the paladin is pretty broken in a bad way. And so a lot of times he'll charge and just get stuck on stuff and all your mana will burn out. And you can actually totally just kind of get rid of that and make your character a really smooth charger. So now we're in act two. And the important things with, with act two is it's kind of a puzzle, essentially. Um, so what you're trying to do is just gather the pieces up and then put them together in the cube, make the giant staff, and then you go to the end, and that'll open up the gates to the, uh, the final boss of Act 2. Um, and this also kind of exists in Act 3, but that's kind of the, the simple, easy way to look at this run. So what I'm doing right now is I've set that TP right there, and this is a way to kind of do forward back strats, you could call them. Uh, maybe that's more of a complicated name that needs to be. But essentially, this lets me uh, continue moving forward without having to worry about um, losing time, right? So if I had gone all the way down there into the, dry, into the Halls of the Dead and not gotten that waypoint, then I would have to either come all the way back up to get out and then continue my way, or I'd have to start back at the beginning there and keep running through. So instead, I set a TP there, and then I move forward, and then that allows me to just continue moving on um, and then I can just go right there. As soon as I get this cube, I can leave the game, or I can just go back to town and then use my waypoint again. So this is actually a good place to showcase the, uh, the maps and how they kind of lay out. So I know that my entrance block is towards the top right. You might say, well, you entered face in the bottom left. Technically true, but my block is towards the top right. So this means that I need to run towards the top left. Um, that's just specific to this area. And it's different for every area, sometimes different for each level. Um, but I know I need to go to the left way to find this exit over here. And it's not always going to be directly to the left. Sometimes it could be up and over. Sometimes it could be three rights make a left, and it can be down below you. Um, but it gives you a general sense of which direction you want to be looking for, because you know that the block has to run in a specific, or has to go in a specific way. 
Um, so that's kind of an example of how the maps uh, look throughout the run and what you're kind of looking for. And so like I said, maybe about half to two thirds of the maps have some sort of pattern like that. Um, and then a lot of them like the maps outside there that aren't within a, a temple or a hall to the dead or something like that. Um, they have less pattern like that and more just look in corners, right? You just need to like, all of those maps are kind of built like rectangles in a way and you need to go look in the corner. Um, so that's kind of what that is. So we've got the first piece of the puzzle and this is actually the, uh, the, the piece that combines everything. So it's gonna be very useful to have. Um, for act two and three. And then I know right here, once again, this is a corner. I know this is an exit. So this will take me to the next area. And that was actually a really nice map. Um, so that's really good. And I'm also extremely happy right now because we just got beetles, which is huge. Um, so beetles are everybody's, what probably people's lesser favorite units uh, in this game. When you're not speedrunning it, you say, oh my gosh, beetles are terrible. They release all these electrical bolts and they're a really great way to just die super easily. And that's very true. Um, but they're also worth a ton of experience. And so a lot of runs themselves can be kind of, if you, if you don't get beetles, you might just, that might throw a run right there because they're worth so much experience to have. Um, and they're really pretty easy to kill. Um, they do a lot of damage, but they also die really quickly. And this is really good as well. I actually have a spawn right next to Beetle Burst. So in the event that I get towards the end of Act 2 and I really, really, really think I need more experience, I can just come back over here and go to my waypoint, basically save quit the game over and over. Um, that's a super boss, super unique boss that's going to continually spawn there. So while a lot of the things in the game are random, that's one of the like few certainties I know is that he will be there with his minions. So that's a great way to just kind of gather a little bit more experience. And, uh, and I don't really mind searching around. OK, there we go. That's actually close enough that I can just go down here. So I'll continue moving down here. But I was going to say, I don't really mind searching around the maggot lair, um, or searching around the far oasis when there's beetles, because it's all just really good experience. And I was a tiny bit under leveled anyways coming into this. So this is, a, this is probably one of the, my least favorite parts of the game, besides Act 3 jungles. Um, okay, there's the exit. So the reason the maggot layer is so awful is one, it's really tight and it's really difficult to move around. And I actually need to go home anyways and get some uh, potions. Um, so it's, re it's really difficult to move around in there. Uh, it's even more difficult for the assassin in that, let's just kind of move some runes around. Um, it's even more difficult for the assassin um, in that it's going to be very, um, a lot of her traps and stuff don't really don't really have good damage, I, I should say, down there. Let's open up space. Look at that. I want to make sure I don't really have to do another trip down, so that's why I'm really stocking up on mana potions. Uh, but a lot of her traps don't really hit down there, so it can just be uh, kind of a pain um, to deal with. But this, this once again has a pattern. You want to run to the right of the way you've come in. So that's why I started down that right path, but I was able to see that the block was actually a little bit further further down there. Um, and then we were fine. So that's nice that I was able to see that, and that's not too bad of an act one, all thi or uh, of a level one, all things considered, with the exception of all these scarabs one by one standing in the way. So there's level one, level two, level three. Um, you can lose a lot of time in here. You can also get not great boss groups or whatever. So the rock worms right here and stuff, not worth the time of experience, take a long time to kill. If you get a lot of those stacking in your way, that can be kind of a, a difficulty that you'll face. And you can see that I'm trying to just make sure that I can get these traps like right underneath them so they'll actually hit. Otherwise, if they're even just slightly off, a lot of times they just, they won't do any damage whatsoever. So the open caverns are definitely preferred um, in this instance. And I'm actually going to run up here and see if I can see down into that area right there. Gain any information. Okay, so that's just going to meet up. So I'm trying to just continue uh, running to this right way, right? Right of the way I came in, and the way I came in is facing towards that top um, left. How am I on gold, actually? Uh, I think I had like 11k, if I'm not mistaken. So gold is a, 
is an interesting part of the run. Um, and, it, and it makes sense, right, from a, a gameplay standard. Um, from a storyline, I don't know how much it makes sense when you're sitting there and you're like, you know, you're like in the middle of a Diablo fight and you come back and you're like, oh, please, I just need a potion to heal myself. And they're like, 500 gold. And you're like, wow, are you kidding? Like, I'm trying to save the world right now. And they're like, yeah, we've got to run a business still. I mean, and everything. So, slightly annoying. Um, and you really have to manage it. And the assassin's a little bit easier to manage because she doesn't quite uh, soak up as much gold. But um, the uh, someone like the sorceress, which I, I ran in the was that last time or the first one? That was the first one. Um, she takes a lot of gold because she's constantly teleporting and using it just nonstop. Uh, so someone like her, it'll just take absolutely forever, uh, and you just have to constantly be aware of how much gold you have and if you're running low and and whatever not. So we're in level three, so now I want to start going straight, and we got a decent level three map. I'm very happy with that. And we'll try to avoid any sort of explosion there. Okay, we're good. So level 15, heading out of there, isn't bad at all. Um, I'd like to be have slightly more experience if I could. But that's something that I'll just try and gather here along the uh, along the path as I'm yeah, some fire res. I'll take it as I'm kind of going forward to the Claw Viper Temple. So this is going to be where I'm getting the last piece. Um, I know that the exit's not down this bottom left just by the way that it is. So, if you take that for what it is. Um, and so now I'm going to be moving up to this top area and hopefully once again we'll get some beetles and get some experience from that, which I'm fine going after. Okay, I'll just run this way. Uh, so get some experience from some beetles along the way and then additionally just look for this exit and so I'm just going to run towards this top corner and hope that find it here. But once again, not too big of a deal if I don't. Um, okay, we did. Perfect. Because there are beetles here. So that once again, that, that makes things a lot easier. So this will be uh, Lost City, and now I just have to find the final corner once again, just looking for corners in Act 2 so I can figure anything out um, of where it's going to be. So it's not in the first corner. This is the only area that the first corner can actually have the exit. All the other exits are going to be in the other three corners, um, but this one can have it right on that initial turn. And sometimes that's that's always the worst feeling when you run the entire map and realize it was just right at the front, and you're like, oh my gosh. Another great way to throw your run, but that one's actually like on you if you do that. So it won't be down here. Uh, we'll continue looking over on this other side and hopefully it is because we have that ladder all the way over there. So if it's not, it's just going to be a long trek back up. That's one of those things where you just have to play the math, and it looks like it did not work in our favor. Um, you have to just play the math and say, okay, there's two exits down below. There's one exit up top. I'm going to go for my odds, um, but in a marathon, odds are usually against you, right? So but we've, had decent, we've had decent RNG so far this run. I can't complain. I have all the runes. That is, uh, that right there is a, a big step because that was that was probably my biggest concern coming in was that I wouldn't get the get the runes there. So, just moving towards Claw Viper Temple. Um, if you want to go ahead and read a couple of donations, go ahead. We have twenty dollars from Steve the Pirate. Had to donate during Mr. Llama's stream for all the great dating advice I've gotten from it over the years. Go Llama! Money to runner's choice. <laughs> So um, a good way to describe uh, my social skills is that I learned my social skills, or I guess me as a whole in dating, is I, I learned my social skills from playing video games with other people who learn their social skills from playing video games. So we have a lot of fun in my chat, uh, just kind of around that, I suppose. There's a couple good stories. You can read another one if you want. Hopefully not about a girl or dating. Uh, this one looks to be about neither of those. Okay. We have $10 from Oatbran. Had to donate during the Diablo 2 run, especially since Llama is the reason I got back into this game. Keep up the good work, everyone. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so right there, I want to go left to the way I came in. Um, this is an example of where going left immediately doesn't always work out in your favor. So it looks like it's not going to be this way. I'll go ahead and continue... Uh, and then expect it to be probably on this down and then over path. So, 
one of those, once again, you just got to kind of run the patterns that you know best, and then if they hit dead ends, you can turn around um, and say, okay, what's going to be the second best pattern here? That would still give me the same result. So this one, I'm guessing, is just going to go really far down to the bottom right, and then should have a kick over to the right here pretty soon. And that'll be my level two. And it's still possible that that is not the path, um, but I'd probably put money on it at this point. It's looking pretty good. And yeah, there you can see it's starting to go up. And our level two should be right here. Perfect. So just a lot of map and pattern recognition. And uh, we set that TP there just as a safety precaution. Fangskin, he's not too bad on the assassin, but he, he's definitely uh, someone who can take out a character pretty easily. He does a lot of damage, and if he gets you kind of in a hit lock, you'll, you'll, you'll just get stunned over and over, and if him and a couple of his minions start hitting you, um, it can turn into a bad time. So at this point, I have both pieces. I'm going to go ahead and just morph them in the cube. That makes uh, a big staff, which we don't have to actually watch being made. You can just say, all right, cool, I know it's being made. Um, and now I'm just going to fill up on some potions here. And my gold is uh, definitely a little bit poor. So that's something to note, I suppose. We'll just have to watch gold along the way. And this is something that, once again, another thing to balance in this game, right? So you're balancing your experience your, your, and your leveling. You're balancing the speed at which you're running through. You're also having to balance the gold that you have um, constantly, because if you run out, then you're going to have not a fun time with uh, trying to buy potions and run, having none to buy, right? So kind of annoying. So now we're going to go ahead and make our way towards um, the Arcane Sanctuary which has no set path in it. This is, this is like the ultimate nightmare of, of any speedrunner right here. You have a one in four chance of finding the right way, um, and that's it. And there's, there's no path. And people will tell you there's a path. They'll say, oh, follow the stars. They move to the left, so it's to the left. Or they'll say, well, my brother, you know, you look at the patterns on the... No, there's nothing. There's nothing, I promise you. We've done thousands of tests. And I'm sure someone still in chat is like, no, I know the way, trust me. You don't. There's nothing. You can't. You just can't do it. Um, so instead, you just put your prayer hands together and you say, all right, Diablo, give me, uh, give me what you got. Give me your best. Give me that first way. Because I've definitely had runs that were on a PB or world record pace heading into here and then fourth weighed it. And unfortunately, I'm kind of known for fourth weighing it as well, third and fourth weighing it. So hopefully. Sometimes even fifth weighing it. Sometimes even fifth weighing it. Thanks for the reminder. Appreciate that. <laughs> so a fifth way is where you start down one path, and then you turn around and go, ah, I don't like this path, whether there's a lot of monsters, or, or you, you miss saw the ending, and you thought that it wasn't the right way. Um, and so you turn around and you run all the other directions, only to realize that, nope, that was the way to go. So this area is especially garbage for the assassin. Um, one, it's a tight area, and I mean, tight areas are bad for a lot of the characters. But uh, the worst part is a couple of the ways have stairs, and stairs are a nightmare. Um, stairs are absolutely horrible because traps don't work on stairs well at all. It's kind of like the maggot lair trying to uh, have traps work. So it's one of those things that can just be really bad. And oh, we got the first way. Everybody, your prayers to Diablo worked. Congratulations. You all just prayed to the devil. Um, but hey, first way, right? So, so that's really good. Uh, that'll definitely be helpful moving forward. And now we, we get to avoid the stairs paths which is um, always super exciting uh, because nobody wants to watch that. That's where I literally just sit there. And if there's a giant group of monsters standing on the stairs, I'll just be casting my fire blast over and over for like 20 seconds waiting to kill them. Um, so now we just go to the Taurasha's Tome, and it looks like that could be a potential area right above. Uh, so normally I want to run to that bottom right area, um, but I'm, I'm taking kind of a guess here, just based on the, the pattern that I see above, that might be a place that I want to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some gold. Um, we also have beetles down here, which is really nice. So this should get me my level 17. And there's my stealth armor. Hopefully you saw all the beautiful stats on it. Um, and it looks like we did not. Okay, so that did not give us the exit, unfortunately. 
but it could potentially still lead us over there. So it wasn't a terrible path to take by any means. So let's continue on. If you want to read another donation while I look for the tome here, and I can talk more about that. So for those of you who may have been watching the GameStone Quick account on social media, you may have seen photos from our SGDQ poker tournament. And we have just received the winnings of the poker tournament from Prolix for $520. And the message with that donation was, Hi everyone, Prolix here on behalf of the SGDQ 2017 Annual Charity Poker Tournament participants. The tourney has ended and we are now donating the winnings to Doctors Without Borders. My thanks to Church and Sarge for organizing things and Hyde Flow Me In for running the tournament. It was wonderful playing with so many great runners, volunteers, attendees, and friends. As the winner, I get to decide what our donation goes towards, so this money is helping unlock the bonus Dark Souls run since I love that game. Here's to everyone having a great time for the rest of the marathon. That's awesome. Congratulations. So now I'm going to go ahead and stock up on potions, and I'm going to go ahead and stock on a couple of thawing potions as well. Uh, and just like I told you guys earlier in the run, that stamina potion stack, thawing potions have the same property. Um, every thawing potion I drink, I'll gain 50 resistance, 50 cold resistance, and that will stack for, or that will work for uh, 30 minutes, or 30 seconds. 30 minutes would be really nice. Um, so I get 30 seconds of additional cold res every time I drink one of those. And since uh, Duriel, who's the final boss here, which we just came upon, um, or we're at, the, we're at the piece now where I'll, I'll have it. Since he is a uh, does a lot of cold damage, that'll be really beneficial in that fight. So for all of you who are out there and are like, oh my gosh, Duriel's impossible, how do you kill him? Um, do yourself a favor and drink a couple thawing potions beforehand and you will have a much better time. And hopefully I have enough potions to kill him. We'll see. So I'm a very, very good uh, on experience right now. I'm very happy with where I'm at. And I suppose right now I can actually talk about something called next delay, um, which is really, really, really cool. Or cool in the mechanic idea, not cool in, in that it makes my damage worse. So what next delay is, is it's a very, it's specific to each skill in its own way. Some skills aren't affected by it, such as Light Sentry, which is a, a lightning trap that she casts. Other skills like Shock Web um, are affected differently than my skill Wake of Fire. So the skill that I'm dropping down right now that's releasing these waves of fire, whenever it hits Duriel, he becomes invincible for a very, for X number of frames. I forget exactly what it is on Wake of Fire. Eight, maybe? 13, eight, somewhere around there. Um, he becomes invincible for that time purely to the next Wake of Fire. So if both of my traps hit him at the exact same time, or if I have five Wake of Fire traps and they all release a Wave of Fire and those waves hit him at the exact same time, I'm not going to get, hey, there you go. We can talk about that too. I'm not going to get any additional damage out of it. It'll be the exact same as if um, only one of them hit. So, um, so, what, so the optimal way that we kind of run is it's dropping two traps at a time. Uh, that tends to be the just kind of preferred method uh, through all of our testing. It's just kind of been, okay, if you have two traps down, you're doing pretty much the most damage um, that you can. So that's the end of Act 2. We can start moving on to Act 3 here. And that little TP trick's a quick way to get over to Mashif. And um, what we saw there is we actually saw two of the exact same um, item just drop, uh, which is, it happens. I'd say it's, it's generally a little bit more rare. Um, and it can happen to set items. So the way the game works is, and, and this is unique to unique items, which we haven't seen any of those yet, um, but they they're kind of have like a, a tannish color. So a unique item can only drop once per game. Um, that is all. So if I find a Stone of Jordan in this game, I can never find another Stone of Jordan, not on this character, right, but in this exact specific game. Um, and what will actually happen is if it tries to roll that item again and it, and it hits that roll, like it would, it would be uh, actually creating it, and Stone of Jordan was a bad idea. That's what a unique looks like but that's a quest item. Um, but if it rolls and it, and it hits what it was supposed to hit, it'll actually roll the item then down again because it's impossible to drop two of the same item um, if it's unique. However, items like set items, anything like that, those can drop twice. So 
uh, we just saw a double drop of Hisaris's belt right there, which is a decent belt. Um, I would have preferred to have boots, but that's okay. So um, something that's really, I, I guess, important to note there is the faster run walk. That's why I would have preferred those boots. Um, that can be a big help in getting a solid run. So a lot of the record runs you'll note have those finds uh, of boots with like 20 faster run walk speed, something like that on them. And that can really improve the speed at which you're running. So act three is um, terrible. It's just a terrible act. Uh, and the reasoning is the way that the pathing is built and the maps are built is very, very weird. So the way that normally would go is Spider Forest goes to the Great Marsh, which then goes to the Flare Jungle. The Great Marsh is pointless. There's nothing in the Great Marsh that you need for the game. You just need Spider Forest and Flare Jungle and then moving forward. Um, but what can happen is sometimes the game will give you the Flare Jungle right next to the Spider Forest. So it won't actually connect to the, the Great Marsh. It'll instead connect to the, the Spider Forest. Um, and you just have to be able to kind of like find that uh, and it's something that takes a lot of time um, to really get familiar with how a map looks to say, hmm, this map looks like it might have a, a skip on it versus, oh, this map looks like it probably wouldn't. And that's just, it's just so hard to read. It's one of those things that's just not easy. You know, a lot of the, a lot of the maps you can be like, oh, I, need, I know I need to go left here or something like that. Um, the way that these maps get generated, it's just super strange. So we just need to uh, kind of run around and, and hope. And in this case, I'm thinking I will hit Flare Jungle. Based on my initial impression here, it feels like there's going to be a Flare Jungle um, over here somewhere, hopefully. But we'll n we won't know for sure. That's not promising. OK, so there might be something off to the right. Um, we'll just have to check. We'll just have to check and see. So I also am going to eventually go back and get a two open socket staff, uh, and that's going to be useful in assisting, and that's not good. OK, so it's looking like there's less and less chance now of there being a flare jungle skip here. Um, I'm also going to be going back and getting a, uh, a two open socket staff so I can make that leaf rune word. But Rao runes aren't viable until level 19 anyways, or usable. So it doesn't really matter at this point. I was hoping maybe I'd like find a short staff along the way. Um, but that hasn't happened. So I'll just continue leveling and, and moving around. And it looks like we are not going to get that skip, unfortunately. So we'll just have to continue on. Um, and I can verify really quick over here that this is going to run into trees, just so I don't look like a fool. Uh, OK. OK. Actually, it's looking a little better now. That's looking a little bit better now. So sometimes you get that like cross at the river, and that's usually a good sign. That was the initial indication to me, and now he did hit Flare Jungle. So we did get the skip. Okay, perfect. So that, that was the initial indication um, that made me believe that there was going to be a skip. If you get that river cross, a lot of times you can see it. Um, it just happened to be right at that cross. And we actually also have really good boss groups down here, so I'm going to get a lot of experience, probably too much experience uh, in the long run here. We'll see. Um, so those, the birds are mediocre. They don't really give a time experience, but all these little flare guys, um, there's just so many of them, and a lot of them are just worth a decent amount of experience. So when you group them all up, it'll, it just ends up leveling up your character really quickly. And like I said, if you watch the experience bar that I have running down at the bottom there, um, you'll see how fast it's actually increasing. I'll go ahead and drop a safety TP. And something you'll note is that sometimes I drop it out of my, out of my inventory, um, and that's kind of the preferred method. And the reason for that is because it doesn't actually take a frame to cast it. It's an immediate action that happens, and it cannot be interrupted when I drop it um, from my inventory. As opposed to if I'm trying to cast it while I'm being attacked, she actually sits there and goes through the cast animation and uses her faster cast rate uh, to cast it. And that can be just absolutely horrible if you're in the middle of a bunch of monsters who keep stunning you, because then you don't get your TP off, you die, and you don't have a good time. Um, so really, really, really nice sometimes to just be able to do that. I'm really happy that it's in the game. That makes speedrunning uh, and like saving yourself if you're going to die or need to get out um, a lot easier. Because without that, there'd be so many times where you just get stuck. And then it's like, well, see, but like right there, I cast it because there was nothing that was going to hit me. It wasn't a big deal. Um, and I just wanted to go home really quickly. So if you want to read a couple of donations, go ahead. 
I have a $20 anonymous donation from a while back, actually. Hey, Lama, love your runs. I'll donate an extra $50 for First Way Arcane Sanctuary. Hey Good luck. So it looks like all of your prayers to the devil seem to have worked and proven quite lucrative. There we go. Look at that. Don't make it a habit, I guess, right? That's... Um, okay, so I'm now looking for the second piece in the, uh, of the four pieces that I need in Act 3. Okay, and I should go home, actually, and get the staff here pretty soon, so... This is going to be the way, yeah. So I'll kill these guys right here, and then I'll drop a TP, and then I'm going to go ahead and head home. After I kill the Gidbin dude. So this, uh, this, this can get me a ring, which can be lucrative. I can't carry anymore. Mm, do that. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and go shop for a two open socket staff now, back in Act 1. After I get my ring. Garbage. Oh well. Uh, and that's usually if you're a sorceress looking for a faster cast rate, that's what you're looking for in that area. That'll work. So that's not the cheapest staff, but it's cheap enough that we don't really care. Oh, I don't have my runes. All right, perfect. Let's go do this. Don't, don't do that. Okay, that was, that was close. So now I'm just going to be moving forward um, and once again doing the forward back strats that I kind of talked about before, right? So I'm going to go forward, go get that waypoint um, at the end of the next area, and then take it back um, uh, to go ahead and go down to that dungeon. That way I'm not having to go down and back up and or restart this area, whatever it is. So I know that I've already skipped the waypoint for the flare jungle. Um, that was definitely in one of the previous iterations there, previous entrances. So I'm going to be go, going forward to the lower Curist and kind of looking around there. Um, and hopefully we can find that decently quickly. It's one of those areas where it'll just kind of be in a random spot. So you just have to run around the map for a few seconds. Hopefully it's not too bad. Uh, but while I go ahead and make that run, if you want to read a couple more donations, go ahead. We have $250 from Trevor134. Always a pleasure to donate to such a great cause. Keep up the good work. Awesome. You can read another two. Go ahead. I have a $20 anonymous donation. Hey, Llama. Good to see you at SGDQ again. Have many issues getting your chain mail through security this year? <laughs> Actually, no. This is the first year that I have not had issues getting my chain mail through. Um, in the past, it's usually they've had to run it through the machine like probably about 12 times, even though every time it comes out and they're like, well, it's still just metal chain mail. Um, but this, this year I ran it through and the guy let it go and then he goes, you make that yourself? And I was like, no, but thanks. And then he just let it pass. So first, first time that I, that I didn't have to sit there and wait for about 30 minutes. But I did get to the airport like 30, 40 minutes earlier than usual because I was expecting it. So you can read another one if you want. I have a $1,212.12 donation from DJW. I also have a $200 donation from Huar Taralam. Caught me off guard this year, so I missed the first 75% of SGDQ this year, but glad I could still catch the Diablo 2 run. Please be worth money. Eh, not bad. So yeah, right now money's still definitely something that's slightly a concern. It's not the worst thing ever, um, but it's something I'll have to continue to monitor. I haven't really found that just, sometimes you find a couple items that are each worth 15K a pop or whatever, and then you're just set for the rest of the run. We'll set that as a small safety. Did not mean to take it though. Uh, so those dolls right there are probably one of the like biggest killers uh, in this game. Not so much in normal, but they explode when they die and they do a lot of damage. Um, and so if you're standing right next to them when they explode, uh, it can be pretty bad. And especially like I've, I've had my um, my like higher level characters and stuff teleport in, and then I'll, they'll have a mercenary with them, which I don't really run a merc in uh, speedrunning. We don't really run them because we're such low levels that the mercs would just die anyways. Um, but, uh, darn, we got a bad path. This one takes forever. 
there's there's preset maps in level three, and this is a, a longer one. Um, so, but yeah, but I've I've had her like teleport in on top of dolls, and then my mercenary kills the doll, the doll explodes, and then my character just blows up and dies immediately. So that's a lot of fun. Thanks, Blizzard. If you want to read a donation, go ahead. We have fifty dollars from Library Nerd. Back in the day, I had to choose between another hell bail run or finishing my degree. Got the diploma. Still not sure it was the right choice. Nope. Needed one more run. One more run would have been good. All right, so now we've got the brain. That's our second piece. We'll just need the third piece. I'm actually going to go repair really quick because my armor is damaged and I don't want my stealth breaking. And of course, it always breaks in like the worst time possible. Um, and that's the same with having this burst of speed enabled. You want to always make sure that you have it like up to date or uh, or whatever, and, and you and you've set it recently because it's always when you're being chased by a giant mob of the worst unit ever um, that it breaks or or it stops and goes off, and then you suddenly slow, and you're like, I don't have the time to cast. Uh, so having that stuff repaired is is definitely very helpful. So the sewers is another one of those areas that's just a little bit of a pain to run around, and we got a really long path there that's not the right way. Um, and this is another one where you just kind of have to run around in a giant circle, and sometimes it ends up being in the middle anyways. So hopefully it's on one of the edges here. Hopefully it's on an edge that's leading us up towards uh, the other exit. There's four exits in here. Um, so if we can find it over here to the left, I would be pretty happy. But we'll just have to see. And there's more dolls down here as well, so... You always kind of want to give them a little bit of space so they're not blowing up right in your face. So I'm just going to find that piece, uh, and then I'm going to head to the Travancle, put it all together, and, um, and then head towards Mephisto, who's going to be the third act boss. And I'll be about three-fifths of the way through there, something like that. So hopefully my time is reflective of that. Um, Act four is definitely faster. So here, we didn't, we didn't catch it, unfortunately. Uh, so I'm going to do the forward back, same sort of style that I've done before. Where I move forward, grab the waypoint, um, and then head backwards. And there's a lot of that that you see in Diablo 2. Sometimes you don't need it too badly. Uh, sometimes you need it all the time. What would really be helpful right now is finding another Rao rune. Um, so Rao runes are going to give, I should use my staff, huh? Rao runes are going to give um, plus to fire resistance. And when you get to act four, that's where fire resistance really becomes important. Uh, so that's something that hopefully we can get along the way here, um, is just additional fire resist to deal with that. Because if you get trapped in a bad spot, which it's very easy to do in the Chaos Sanctuary, uh, if you get trapped in a bad spot down there and a couple pit lords come over and breathe some fire, um, you're just really not going to have a good time. So, still looking here. Hopefully it's not a center. But it might be. It might just be one of those terrible maps. Oh, nope, here it is. Just took a long time. So I actually don't really need to stop and kill anything. I've got my level 20. Um, so I need to just pretty much go forward at this point. Put our pieces in. Get our chain mail out. Okay. So we'll go get this final piece. If you want to read a couple more donations, go ahead. We have a $200 donation from Justin R198. First time donating at GDQ, Diablo 2 is a childhood favorite. Seeing it being run so well blows my mind. Not even death can save you from Llama. One of my favorites. Donation goes to Runner's Choice. Uh oh, Fire Enchanter. So I just need to kill one of the boss guys here, um, and one of them is Fire Enchanted, so we'll just avoid him. We'll go kill this guy. And there's a rare amulet. I'll go ahead and morph this. Grab the amulet. And go over here. And I'll go ahead and restock on potions while I have a quick second. Because we're going to need a couple more from Mephisto. We have and hopefully. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. We have $150 from Mike26. Diablo 2 is my favorite PC game for one reason only. Moo. 
Love the cows. Well, act I'll actually, uh, since we did meet the cow incentive, um, we'll be doing the cows at the end of this run. Which way am I running? Uh, we'll actually, I'll actually go over um, a little bit of the backstory of the cows and, and everything, because uh, there's a little bit of history there. So I'll do that when we get towards the cows. So I want to run left of the way that I came in um, for the first level, and then this is going to be fun. That's an interesting setup of that map. Uh, and then over here, I want to run straight across. So hopefully it's just simple, and it's right here. And it looks like it is, so that's pretty good. So now we're just going to face Mephisto. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kill this guy to the left, reason being he can heal Mephisto. Um, and it's just really annoying when you get Mephisto down to like 10 life, and then he gets healed back up to half. So we'll kill him. Uh, then I'm going to gently just kind of approach Mephisto and just toss some balls his way. Um, you know, establish a dominance, uh, kind of like with my dog. And then I'm going to lead him over here to this ledge. If he will follow. And then I'll run around and bring him back. And now we'll just abuse him, uh, unlike my dog. Do you want to read a couple donations while I go ahead and kill Mephisto here? We have $25 from Spooky Modem. Much love for Diablo 2. Shout out to my brother Dave, who cleansed the den of evil hundreds of times. Good job, Dave. Doing God's work there. Almost You're literally, actually. More. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> we have $150 from Chucky J. Thanks, GDQ, for this great event. Diablo 2 is a true classic. I certainly agree. Yeah. It's only 17 years old. Maybe they'll make a sequel. Yeah, maybe. W would be nice. It would be nice. So this is just a nice way to cheese him here, where you just don't have to deal with anything. Uh, and if you're, if you're ever sitting there with a character, and you're like, oh, I just really need to get, like, I need to find a lot of items. Mephisto has a great drop table. And uh, additionally, you can cheese him like that. So there's a lot of characters that can do that with different skills. So he's a great place to just kind of go, and you don't have to be super good at the game or anything to do it. Um, you can just head over there and then just do that and get all of his loot. So works out pretty well. I have an anonymous $25 donation. Playing Diablo 3 with my husband while we watch this awesome Diablo 2 run. Diablo may be trying to tear the world apart, but he's bringing our family together. <laughs> And uh, Kane will continually give you the Mephisto Soulstone, and he's like, please take this warrior to the Soulstone Hellforge. Not really a great Kane voice, but whatever. Um, so we just throw it on the ground, because that's a side quest we don't care to do. Uh, and so I'm just going to run around these maps. These are, they have preset exits, but it's, again, kind of a random generation of those exits. So I'm just going to run to all the known spots, hopefully find them first way. Didn't get this one. Um, head over here and then head down to this bottom right corner, worst case. So you don't have to actually run like entire maps circle around uh, all the time. Some areas have predefined exits that it's just go there. So, that, so there's a lot of stuff that can be learned with Diablo 2 um, for, ooh, that's not a place I want to be, for where you want to run. Uh, so at this point you're going to note that I'm not really killing a lot of stuff. Uh, like I said, I've hit my level 20. Anything at this point is completely relevant for additional killing. Um, all I need to do is get level 20, get to the Ancients, uh, and then move forward. Um, I will be killing some stuff in the Chaos Sanctuary, but that's just kind of to clear stuff out, and because that's part of the game, you have to do kill some certain monsters. Um, you'll note, though, that my experience gain is going to be a lot lower than you would normally expect, right? You'll be like, wow, you just killed that whole boss group, and you got basically nothing for it. Uh, and that's because the way the game works... Um, is that it's set up so there's a level penalty on both sides. So if you kill something that's too weak, you don't get very much experience. You get a, you get a percent penalty on that. This is a really bad city of the danged. Um, and if you kill stuff that is too high of a level at the same time, even though it was really difficult and it took you forever, um, you're still going to get a level penalty, penalty anyways. So kind of stinks, and oh, that's not great. So... I actually really like having that Frost Nova. Um, so you're also going to note that the game gets a little bit more difficult when you get to Act 4 here, and thankfully we found this exit. Uh, so there's a lot of really like 
a lot of it comes down to, at this point, really just finding the, the holes that you need to kind of run through really quickly. And it's one of those things where you can't stop and think and look and say, okay, do I need to go here? Because by that point, you're already too late. You need to already be through there. Um, so a lot of it's just focused on leading monsters in very specific ways so that they'll, they'll kind of create an open path for you to run through. And sometimes that's not the case, and then you just have to kill them. Um, but, or die trying to get through. But you'll, you'll probably see that a few more times here in the River of Flame. Uh, and then as we continue through into the Chaos Sanctuary, that'll happen plenty. Um, so there's some preset maps for the Chaos Sanctuary, or preset kind of starting blocks. Uh, so I know which way to run based on what I see. So it's kind of little puzzle pieces, but there's only a few of them. So like this right here, I'm just going to have to kill these guys because they're going to keep spawning babies. And there's no way that I would be able to run past them based on how they were laid out there. And this will also be to the left. So they're actually one of the worst groups to have to run through, just because they dropped so many little baby demons. If you want to read a couple more donations, go ahead. We have $200 from Ruffin. Awesome to see a Diablo 2 run. I played that game a lot when I was younger. And if there is one thing I learned about finding the correct way in Diablo 2, it's that it's always in the last part of the map. That's right. <laughs> this donation goes to Breath of the Wild. Oh, gosh. Now, speaking of Breath of the Wild, we are actually past the $50,000 mark, so that's more than halfway to that incentive. So definitely get your donations in if you would like to see SGDQ last a little bit longer. That would be an awesome run to see. That's definitely my uh, runner's choice. So at this point, um, I'm probably going to go back home, grab a couple more potions, and then refill my TP scrolls. Because that's if there's one way that I can like throw this run right now um, and really end with a very bad time, it's forgetting that I don't have any more TP scrolls somewhere really important. So we'll make sure that we fill up on those. And hopefully that should be enough for the rest of the run. And my gold's actually pretty good now after I got um, a couple items there in Act 3 to really help out with that. A couple things from Mephisto, he dropped pretty good gold. So I shouldn't have to worry too much, assuming Diablo drops even mediocre gold. So at this point, I'm going to spawn uh, this boss group right here. And something that we I can kind of showcase, showcase a little bit is that the bosses will keep their monsters on a leash. So there's kind of a set leash, a leash. And if the boss is not chasing you, the monsters will run back to their boss. Um, so you can kind of abuse that a little bit. However, of course, if the boss does get close enough, then everything will just charge at you straight away. So it's something to note. At this point, I'm going to kind of do this little um, run back and forth here as I lead him over towards the next seal. The reason is because uh, Infector has a very high fire res, and so it takes a while to kill him. And so if I sit over there and just waste all that time, of course, I'm just going to be losing seconds trying to deal with him there. So instead, I'll head this way and uh, deal with him over here. And I'm really trying to be careful because I only have eight fire res, so if any of these Inferno Breaths hit me, it's going to do a ton of damage. So I really just have to be a little bit careful um, in my running to make sure that I'm not getting hit by those. And now we're probably getting pretty close to being able to spawn that next wave. Assuming this doesn't go too bad here. Okay. So we'll spawn that next wave, and we can go ahead and kill both of these simultaneously. Once again, that'll just speed us up a little bit. And the spell that you just saw on top of my head, the little like blue wave. So right now I have amp damage on my head. This is 200% damage. Um, but essentially, you get cursed a bunch in the Chaos Sanctuary, and one of them will slow you and increase the damage that you take. And that's always the worst, because whenever you're trying to squeeze through a, a, an area, and you're like, I just, I'm about to make it, and then you get hit with that, it can just mean instant death, just because you get slowed enough. So we'll kill these two guys, and we'll pop one more seal, and we should be good. Uh, if you want to read another donation, go ahead. Hold on just a moment here. Sure. All right, we have a, a really quick $25 donation from Stars Eclipsed. Been loving GDQ all week. Plan to watch and play video games all day long. Let's get Breath of the Wild to its goal. Let's do it. Perfect. 
We have $150 from Bongo the Monkey. The most difficult part of Mr. Lama SC's run is wearing the chainmail the whole time. First time donator, had to donate during my favorite game with my favorite Diablo 2 runner using my favorite class. Keep doing great things, GDQ staff, participants, and viewers. And speaking of great things, we have just passed $1.2 million. Woo! Uh, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and um, go get that mercenary. So I talked about I might have a mercenary at some point in this run. Uh, that's going to be at this exact point, and he will just be a sacrifice slightly after that, unfortunately. Um, but for the moment being, he's going to be useful, so just don't tell him that we're going to sacrifice him later, I guess. Um, so that guy right there that just spawned is fire immune. All of my attacks are fire. I could either sit there and save up some poison potions, and then it would take a long time. Uh, to kill him, just throwing those, or I can come back here and get a cold mercenary um, and just let him do his job and kill, uh, kill the guy here. So go on there. And please don't tell me that that happened. Don't. <laughs> no, come back. Oh my gosh. Okay, there he is. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was really close. So there's a slight tiny chance, and by this I mean it's happened to me one time, where Grand Vizier um, just decided to take a walk and just flew off the map and just flew up into the top left area and never came back. And so I went all the way through and I was on a really good pace, I was racing, and that was the end of that because, well, there's my favorite quote, uh, nothing, nothing, nothing to be done there. Right, that's just, you just had, I just had to reset. So I was really scared that we, were, we had that again. I did not see him for that first second. But sometimes he does just like to go for a little fly. But yeah. So once again, like I said before, due to next delay, I'm just going to be dropping traps in sets of two, uh, and then immediately switching over into fire blasting. Um, and something that you'll, you'll also note um, is that I really want to avoid uh, well, one, his fire damage from that is going to be uh, do a lot of damage to me right now because I have low fire res. But that lightning bolt that he like shoots out of his, his laser beam, essentially, you could say, is half physical damage, half lightning damage. So I have 29% light res. So that'll mitigate it a little bit, but it still does a ton of damage. But the bigger issue is all the physical damage as well. My defense is complete garbage. I have 70 defense right now. Um, that's something that, as a speedrunner, you just say, eh, not worth it, because there's a level penalty in, in that as well and everything when calculating if something's going to hit you. Um, so you just don't even deal with defense at all. You don't even think about it. But it makes things like that physical damage from this attack do a lot of damage. We'll go pick that up. So Diablo fight isn't too bad if you can just avoid that. The only real trouble is sometimes he'll bone prison you. So he'll put you in a, in a prison of bone. Very self-explanatory. Uh, and then immediately after that, lightning breath you. And usually in those cases, you're dead or you just have to do an emergency um, drop TP and go home right before you die. So that's definitely been the death of multiple players before in runs, including myself. And we don't really need gold, but I would take a little bit of gold. Okay, not too bad. So we'll get a little bit more gold out of that. We should definitely be totally set. So I'm going to go ahead and buy my potions here in Act 4. Um, the reason for that is because they're actually worth money. I don't want the stone. Uh, they're actually worth more, more money. Or, or they cost half. They cost half as much as they would in Act 5. I suppose I should say it the other way. They cost twice as much in Act 5 until you complete the first quest. So in that case, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, save a little bit of money there and 58000 We should have plenty for the rest of the run where I can pay that extra price um, in Act 5 to go ahead and, and deal with it there. So if you want to read a couple donations, I'm just going to be running for a little bit here. We have a $50 anonymous donation. Diablo 2 is the first online multiplayer game that I tru got truly hooked on. Thanks to Mr. Lama SC for reminding me how amazing fire trapped assassins were and the fun of racing ladders in the new seasons. They really are uh, really strong. If you are looking to get into Diablo 2, one, I think you should do it. It's an awesome game. Uh, but two, this would be a great class to start with. Um, the assassin and then the elemental druid as well 
um, just have such strong early game. And as you can see, she has great vitality, right? So her life boost is really good. Um, her fire traps are really strong. And if you are actually sitting there and like getting gear and leveling up to be an appropriate level at this time, instead of way under leveled, um, you'll just absolutely destroy everything. Oh wow, that is a complete block there. I actually Fine. can't remember, this was a while back, but I think an assassin may have also been my first ladder character. Um, it was either that or a druid, most likely. Yeah, yeah, those are, they're very, I don't know if they're super common starting characters, but it's definitely like, this is the recommended character that I would give um, to anyone, or one of a couple, because it's just, it's just so strong, and it really allows you to, uh, to move around and still kind of not have to sit there and worry about faster cast rate and stuff like that and always getting hit when you're, when you're trying to cast things as much. Plus, you get a lot of bonuses from all of her passives. Um, that can be super helpful. So, would recommend. We have $25 from Wither. I'm donating during Diablo 2 because my fiancé and I love playing Diablo co-op together, and this is for her. Sometimes it can seem like the world is really not going your way, but the camaraderie skills and generosity of GDQ always lifts her spirits. The fate of the animals is already decided, but let's save the world. And I think that's a really good point, and kind of on a more serious note, I want to give a big shout out to everybody um, who has donated to such a great cause uh, just throughout this run. I mean, when I was younger, I remember um, looking up to my brother and always kind of wanting to follow in his footsteps and, and everything. And he taught me about friendship and responsibility and, and, and so much more. Uh, and then when I graduated high school, um, I watched him head off to South America for a little bit to go provide some healthcare services to those in need. Um, and it was just so inspiring to see someone give so much. And even when there was a little bit of a scare down there, it didn't even like phase him one bit because just, I mean, he took that risk because he valued giving, uh, uh, giving to others above everything else. And uh, when he finally came home, you know, I remember just running up to him and giving him a big hug and it was just, I mean, it just made me so proud to have someone like that in my life. And the fact that there are doctors without brothers out there who have never had those experiences uh, and that I shared with mine is really, really sad to me, you know. And the fact that there's an organization, though, that's out there and, and can help, help them uh, and help those doctors out is, uh, hold on, I'm getting some of my headset. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. All right, disregard what I said for the last couple of minutes. Never mind there. But still a great cause. Still a great cause for sure. Doctors without borders, everybody. Great cause. So now I'm going to be moving forward to uh, the Ancients' Way here. Uh, this is going to be shower and nice. Um, this is going to be very. This is like the, the the piece of the run where I have to have level 20, right? Um, so I need to make sure that. Uh, oops. I need to make sure that I'm level 20, uh, otherwise you cannot complete this quest and you cannot complete the run. Um, and so that's, uh, that's always like a huge thing. Sometimes I've had it happen before where I got to level 19 or whatever, uh, 19 and, and 9 tenths, and then I was sitting there and I was like, oh gosh darn, like as, as I'm about to the Ancients, you have to run back and go get more experience and, and it's just a giant pain. Um, so I'm just going to be navigating through these maps, getting over to Ancients. Uh, and then we'll just kind of see from there, and that's a really good Glacial Trail map. So that's definitely going to be helpful moving forward here. Definitely going to be helpful moving forward. And now I'm just on the way to the final bits. If you want to read a couple more donations, go ahead. We have $50 from Trinity3. Third year of watching GDQ, and I love the Diablo 2 runs each time. We have $50 from Sezi. Diablo 2 is such an awesome game. Mr. Lama, give us your best. Stay a while and listen impression, and I'll donate another $50. Stay a while and listen. Oh, I think I just moved the window. My bad. Do you want me to move it back, or do you want to move it back? I'll let you guys readjust. So one thing is that this game is being played in a tiny 800 by 600 window. Are you guys getting it fixed? Yeah, you got it, okay. <laughs> this game is played in a tiny 800 by 600 window and, uh, and that is the best resolution that this game has to offer. 
Um, D2 maybe on full resolution coming soon. That'd be nice. Um, so, so something that you just kind of have to to accept, I suppose, uh, is that this can happen sometimes. Sometimes you click it and move it around. And the way that we're screen capturing here, unfortunately, is going to make that slightly difficult. OK, so I'm actually going to show you guys a cool trick here that you can do with the ancients. Good afternoon. So let me just fill up on potions. And then we can move forward, and we should be good. So that window is actually pretty close. Shouts to the stream tech back there. We get it? Awesome. Good job, guys. Good job. <laughs> that may not be the last time. I hope it is, though. I really hope it is. So the first thing I have to do is I have to just double check that neither of these guys are basically fire immune. So they actually wear hidden items. And sometimes those items can just be absolutely ridiculous and give tons of fire resistances. Um, which it looks like they are not, so that's good. So we just have to kill Maddock here. Um, and what I'm, what I'm actually going to be doing is I'm going to be overwriting the uh, whirlwind ability um, that you're seeing on Talik right there. Uh, and the reason is because that can sometimes one-shot you and do a lot of damage, and that's not fun at all. So what I have to do first is I have to drop, the, um, drop four potions on the ground with the cube. And then the next Fire Blast that I deal has to hit right there. Okay, that hits Talik. And then I have to um, swap the game, or swap my keyboard over into uh, the German keyboard set, because Diablo's German game means devil. Um, and then I have to type out the following 10,894. And having done that, it should be good. And he should no longer be whirlwinding us. So, works out really nicely. Okay, all right, we gotta be careful on that regard. They do a lot of damage right now. And that's not actually true, though. There's no setups. I told you, there's nothing cool in this game. I just, I try and make stuff cool because, you know, you just run around and it's the same stuff. Um, yeah, basically, if you stand right here, he just won't whirlwind off the edge. So, it's an unfortunate attempt at uh, making something seem a little bit cooler than it is. But there are a couple of pathing glitches that you can do. Um, it's nothing that you use in a normal run. Um, here, I just want to group them up so my fire blast will hit both of them which it does, uh, but it's something that I want to have like in, in the hell run and stuff, having the pathing is really important uh, because someone like a, a sorceress or, um, or whatever needs to, needs to put one of the characters in a specific position um, and then kind of move forward from there. And let me verify, okay. Uh, so now I'm just gonna be running around. This is similar to the catacombs in that I have no clue in which direction I need to run, so I'm just going to do random exploration. So if you want to do a couple donations while I'm running here, go ahead. We have an anonymous $200 donation. Really enjoying the Diablo 2 run. It's a game I probably have played more than any other in my life. Assassin was my favorite class too. Keep up the good work. We have $125 from Fishy. Go Llama. Hype. Hype. Ooh, jeez. We have $150 from Karma Z. Had to donate during my favorite game of all time. Keep it up, GDQ. One of my favorite events of the year, every year. Never ceases to amaze me with all of the incredible content. Yeah, there have been a lot of really cool runs uh, at SGDQ so far. And, and definitely a shout out to all of the runners um, who, who have been here and have put on such great runs and had such great commentary. I have had a blast being here. And then a shout out, of course, to all the staff as well who have run such a great event. Um, but I've, I've had a really good time. Uh, it's been super cool to watch all the runs, per, per usual. Every year never really lets me down. So at this point, I am just looking for, um, this is another map that I'm going to run in this clockwise manner, and, and that should get me to the path right there, um, instead of getting me to the waypoint, which I would need if I was continuing in a hell run, but since we're not, um, I'm not going to go ahead and get that. Uh, and the reason is just because I know that the exit is going to spawn to the right of uh, the path that I'm going to be 
going down, right, towards level 3. I need to be a little careful here, because those Death Lords, if there's any monster in the game that looks like it's going to kill you and will kill you really easily, like it matches its look, it's definitely the Death Lord. Um, they do a lot of damage, and they build up frenzy charges whenever they hit you, and then they're faster, and they hit faster, and getting caught in a, a pack of those can be pretty, pretty instant death. So we spawn that monster group down here, and we just want to get away from them, if possible. So I'm heading now towards the throne. Looks like we should have it right over here. Uh, and this is going to be where I'm just going to go off, face against Bale, um, or face the waves of his minions first, and hopefully there's not any, um, or not a lot of stuff inside the throne. This is another place that, oh, okay, that's fine, uh, that you can get sort of packs like this and it can make runs a little, take a little bit more time. Other times the throne can be completely empty and you can save a minute or something like that. Um, so we'll kind of see as we progress in if it's too bad. Not looking too terrible right now, a few Death Lords. And just kill this guy right here, and I think we should be good. Yeah, okay. So once again, now I'm going to have to go back and resurrect my uh, mercenary, and he's going to be useful for that first group. And then after that, we'll see how long he can make it. Maybe he'll last to Diablo or something, or to Bale, right? Maybe. Probably not. We have $200 from Jackson. Mr. Llama! Really good run so far. Finish strong. All the love from Papa Jackson. <laughs> Thanks, Papa Jackson. So one thing to note right there is you note that I'm standing right next to him. Uh, and the reason for that is because if you stand right on top of him right there, he actually won't re resurrect the rest of his minions. So he can, he can resurrect any of those uh, dudes that just died. So by standing on top of him, he'll actually try and melee you instead. Um, and that can kind of like save you from some time. Additionally, he won't move around, and your mercenary generally stops and, and hits more. If Whenever you're moving around, a lot of times your mercenary will start to like go on long walks like that, and during that time, he's not going to be attacking anything. So it's really uh, beneficial to not have to deal with that stuff and just stand right next to him. And then you just have to be careful because he does do a little bit of damage and being fire enchanted, rip mercy. Uh, being fire enchanted, he does do a uh, exploding shot when he dies. So that's why I stepped away in that final frame that he was going to blow up. So that way I wouldn't take the extra damage. So same idea, dropping two traps down and then fire blasting is generally going to be uh, the best manner for dealing with all of these monsters here. So the good news is I haven't died yet this run, um, which has really been beneficial. And oh, all right, cool. Well, no. So what, I, what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm going to be luring out um, these monsters. And once again, I, I talked about the monsters stay on a leash. They like to stay next to their boss. So I have to make sure that that boss has always got me in sights and it's going to be close enough and that I die at just the right time. Get a little bit further out. OK, that should be good. OK. And that I also have enough scrolls of TP, because once again, this is a, a great place to go ahead and pop in and go, oops, I'm out of teleport scrolls. And then your run is gone. I actually threw away a record run. Uh, it was like a year ago or something, so it was a long time ago, by doing that. And that was the worst. Um, so once again, I'll just drag these monsters. And the way this works is, with Bale, all he cares is that you're out of the throne room. That's it. As long as you're out of the throne room, or, or you drag his monsters out, he's like, all right, well, I guess he killed them. Um, out of sight, out of mind, I guess, sort of thing. So you don't really have to worry about anything else there. Uh, you just have to drag those away. So the first three waves are easy enough to kill, plus they're a little harder to drag anyways. Um, but those last two waves, it's pretty simple to just do a quick drag. So um, timer will stop on bail kill, but it's going to be a little bit. So if you want to read a couple donations here, go ahead. We have $20 from McGuire72, speed running reinvigorated by Love for Diablo 2, a game nearly 20 years old that I played endlessly in my adolescence. Shout out to Mr. Lama, Teo, and all the other awesome Diablo 2 speedrunners, and GDQ for spearheading this amazing event I get to look forward to twice a year. Donation goes to Runner's Choice. Oh my gosh. Alright, so Bale likes to be annoying and spawn a clone sometimes. 
Um, and this is a really bad place for that clone to be spawned as well. I wish that he would move out a little bit further. So I'll stick in here for a little bit maybe and fight this bale, and then maybe I'll move out at some point. Um, so the, you can actually tell the difference between the two. If you look at their names, it's very subtle. It's very subtle, but if you look at their names, the demon below, oh my gosh. All right, let's, uh, yeah, we'll do this really quick. The demon below is gonna be slightly off-centered on the real one, and then on the fake, on the clone uh, bale, it's gonna be perfectly aligned on that side. So if you look at the, just where that demon is, cause like right now I don't, don't know which one it is. Okay, so the real one is the one on the, the left here. Right, you can see the demon in, in his name shift. So it's the one that has demon in the middle. So that or the fake one is usually the one taking a lot more damage because it doesn't have the exact, uh, doesn't have the same health pool. So one of the two ways, but easy way is just name recognition to say, am I actually attacking the right one or am I attacking a clone? And yeah. So same idea once again, drop two traps, fire blast everything due to next delay. And, uh, and this kill, I mean, a lot of the kills are a little bit slower on Bale. He has a pretty high health pool. Um, but he's, but uh, the Sorceress is the one who can just take him down really easily. But then as the game goes on, and, and Nightmare and Hell, Hell Bale usually aren't as difficult, Nightmare especially, um, for, for certain characters. Assassin's not too bad. All right, this clone is a lot of fun. All right, don't run out of money. I have an anonymous $250 donation that just says, Llama Love. Llama Love. All right, so we'll probably go ahead and kill this clone as well here. I'll set, I'll each give them their own traps, so two and two. Not close. Um, just to get rid of it. Hopefully he doesn't spawn another one immediately. Sometimes he goes on a spree. I think like the better your time is, the more often that he drops clones, just because he really likes to ruin records. Uh, but sometimes they'll go on a spree, and every single time that you kill it, or you can actually despawn it if you run far enough away, and then go to town and then come back, um, he'll immediately spawn it again. And it's just, it's just so annoying. And uh, I guess at this point we can close the save, leave Kane. I'm guessing that we're saving him. We are indeed saving him with over $7,000 donated to wow. that particular incentive. Wow. And leave him had 2400 Good job, everyone. All right, we will go save Kane and maybe listen to a story for a little bit, see what he has to say. I'm sure it's interesting. We have $150 from Durlag. Had to donate during Diablo 2, one of the best dungeon grinders of all time. Love the chain mail, by the way. Thank you. Uh, no more town visits, just die. All right, get ready. Soon. Time. What did we end up? 142.22. Perfect. All right. Awesome. <laughs> uh, so that's actually uh, that's a decent time right there. Um, I gave kind of this longer estimate, uh, slightly longer estimate, just because, once again, if I hadn't found stealth runes or I hadn't found the leaf runes or something like that, um, it could be uh, pretty bad. So I have to reset right here, by the way, so I can go actually save Kane. So I'm going to run back to the Dark Woods and go through this small bit of this quest um, and then uh, go forward and save Kane, and then at the same time we can get Wurt's Lake. So I suppose while I'm doing all this, I can kind of tell the story, the history of uh, Diablo and the cow level and everything like that. So back in, in Diablo 1, right, back when it was released, um, there's an, there was an old kind of legend myth that you could somehow use the cow in Tristram to generate a secret cow level. And uh, people came up with all sorts of theories, 
And then Blizzard responded with a riddle on their forums, and they said, no, there is no such thing. And that kind of perplexed the masses, and it kind of led to this whole mad craze trying to solve the riddle. You know, what could it mean? There's six words in that. Six is Diablo's number. Do we have to bring the cow to Diablo and sacrifice him? How do we do that? Um, so people were going on this mad craze, still looking around, trying to figure out, and they're like, nah, there's definitely, you know, we know it's there. Uh, so then they kept searching, trying to figure out, okay, what do we got to do? And then two years later, um, you know, after, after no real avail, no, no forward motion made on it, Blizzard came out and released another riddle. This time they put it in their game StarCraft um, in the form of a cheat code, which some of you guys probably know. There is no cow level, uh, which will skip you to any campaign mission. And you know, as soon as they, they released this, upon this reveal, players were like, oh, well, now we know that there's definitely um, a cow level and stuff. Clearly, has to be one. Uh, but you know, we couldn't figure out what it meant still. Oops, got to go back to Dark Woods. Right? What does it mean there is no cow level? Uh, so at this point, players continue testing. We're unable to find, um, figure anything out. Man, where is this tree? Is that it down there? Did I just? Not go explore it completely? No? All right. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, and so, so they kept looking uh, at that point. And, uh, and then finally in Diablo 2, um, we found what we're going to be seeing here pretty soon, uh, which was the ultimate reveal of all the clues, uh, which was old Tristram. And then you see it's all burned down. And there's, um, you know, there's a, there's a dead cow and there's a dying wurt's leg. And, uh, and that was it. That was what we missed the whole time. All we had to do was burn down Tristram and kill wurt and a cow and steal his leg. And then we could have had it. So that's the history of the cow level with a couple minor things thrown in there. In actuality, I think it was just people just saw the cow and were like, oh, let's add a cow. Oops, didn't touch the last one. Let's add a cow level, and Diablo 2 added it. So, thanks, Blizzard. And this has become, there's the dead cow, right? You can make him explode by touching his body. Save Kane, who sometimes, really, really, really rare bug, won't actually go home, um, and will instead stay there and just stand and wait so you can actually see him at home. How's it going, bud? Uh, and so now we'll go ahead and make the cow level by transmuting Wurt's leg uh, with a Tome of Town portal. I'll go ahead and restock on those. And we can go in here, and uh, this is one, one of my favorite areas and probably everybody's favorite areas. If you haven't seen the cow level before, um, just sit back and enjoy. It's just a giant mass of cows on a place called Moo Moo Farms, which is the greatest name. Um, and all of the cows themselves like all of the voices, I think were just done by like developers and stuff, just sitting in a sound booth mooing. So just getting that image uh, in my mind as I play through it and listen to it just just makes me happy. I mean, it's just a good time. So um, one other thing to note with the cow level is it's actually used in the hell run or a lot of hell runs uh, because it, it gives such good experience that you can you can actually see my experience bar starting to like go up again. Um, so it's a great place to get some experience from like level 20 to 25. Uh, which is then needed, at that point, the level penalty for the below level actually turns off. So at that point, you no longer have to worry about killing monsters too high of level and losing experience for them, um, which you do have to worry about you know, all the way up until it. So a lot of times we'll use cow level. We'll probably do it a couple of times. So if you want to do it multiple times, though, you can't kill the king, as I'm sure you all know. But since we're only doing it one time, we'll kill the king. Kind of a special treat, right? So if you have any donations you want to read while I kill the cows, go for it. We have $250 from Not the Cow King. Moo, moo, moo. There is no cow level. Moo, 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 moo. Donating to an amusing cause. Oh, jeez. Moo, need to runner's choice. Moo. Moo, moo, moo. <laughs> moo. Yeah, feel free. Feel free to move. If you, if, you, if you get the sudden urge to move, go for it. This is what we're all about here. We have $50 from EOJ. Had to donate during Diablo 2, my favorite game of all time. I've made friends over 10 years ago that I still talk to and game with today. Watching Llama's stream last week reminded me of what a great game Diablo 2 is, so I picked up the game again for my first hardcore single-player walkthrough in years. Keep up the great work. 
I wonder what not the Cow King would say about the Cow King dying here. Probably nothing, right? Yeah, he's okay. He's not he's the Cow okay. King. He's not the Cow King. I'm gonna go kill a couple more cows here and then uh, clear it out. We have an anonymous $150 donation. No comment. You can keep going with a couple if you want. We have a $500 donation from Chris Paul 92 May all the streamers keep up the good work and finish strong. We have $25 from Mutata. I just had to donate due to Llama's trolling. Keep it up, man. Donation to Llama's choice. Thank you. Um, all right, yeah. So we'll kill a couple more cows here, and then should end it. Uh, but while we're finishing this up, I just want to say thank you again to everybody. Um, really appreciate being allowed to come here and speedrun Diablo 2. I uh, really appreciate everybody who's supported me all, all the way through, um, and everybody who hangs out and loves Diablo 2 as much uh, as I do. It's definitely a really fun game, and I'm glad that um, I'm able to provide some entertainment of it with it, maybe, something like that. Um, and then shout out, of course, to everybody who's been donating and to, once again, such a great cause, Doctor Without Borders. Um, just, just absolutely awesome. So, really do appreciate that. And I uh, just want to say thanks. And with that, I think we've cleared the cow level. So that will be the end of Diablo 2. All right. Awesome job, Mr. Lama, on saving us from the great...